risk of rain today. Just a glorious English summer's afternoon. Welcome to the start of Wimbledon 2008. As is tradition, of course, the defending men's champion will play the first match on the centre court. Roger Federer beginning his campaign for a sixth successive Wimbledon title. I fell in love with Wimbledon because of its tradition, its history, that you just feel very honoured and uh, privileged to be playing on a, such a perfectly laid grass court. You know that somebody's been going around with the scissors and making sure that every blade of the grass is perfect. A super performance from uh, the defending champion. Rafael Nadal, clearly he is a better player than he was even a year ago when he pushed Roger Federer in the final. Well played, Roger Federer. Sabía que que había hecho un muy buen torneo y que estuve cerca de ganar, pero en aquel momento fue un momento duro porque yo en aquel momento no sabía si podría tener otra vez la oportunidad de ganar Wimbledon. First point for the man from Mallorca. <laughs> Just two breaths in the match, six four. But it's a three sets win for Rafael Nadal. He's on his way at Wimbledon 2008. Roger's the greatest balletic mover that tennis has ever seen. One of the greatest ball strikers, you know, phenomenal, you know, beyond belief. The defending champion yet to drop a set. Simply in a different world at the moment. And it's not a world that too many players inhabit. He's been in the zone for the last five years here at the All England Club. <laughs> Rafa's got that intensity, the energy that's so debilitating to opponents. This is so intimidating that it tires you out mentally. Rafael Nadal through to the quarterfinals. No doubt that there's been some surprises, you know, especially Andy and Novak losing. Um, when you see this draw sort of being narrowed down and you see that Rafa is the big favorite, you know, in the other section, and I'm the big favorite in my section, obviously you start thinking more about, uh, you know, the possible final. Yes, it'll be a sixth final in a row for Roger Federer. Three sets now. It will be the dream final. Federer against Nadal. Three sets to love. I've seen a lot of tennis matches, and I've commentated a lot and watched a lot and played a lot. If you add everything together, there's no question in my mind overall. The 2008 match between Rafa and Roger, 
was the greatest tennis match ever. prepared I've had a good championship so far you know and I was playing rough is the is the test that I was hoping for I mean rough is a great competitor every time I want to play him I want to try to beat him you know Federer says I know how to play rough I know what I have to do do you know what you have to do to beat Roger Federer on grass no no <laughs> <laughs> I always want to try my best, you know, go on court, try to play my best tennis, try to put my rhythm, the intensity, and later if he play better than me and he beat me, just congratulate him like, like every year. <laughs> Wimbledon's that distant, magical place that you, across the ocean, that had this aura about and this beauty. There's a you know, magic to Wimbledon that players feel. It's a combination of where you're playing, who you're playing, and the quality of the tennis. You know, the tension and the excitement. Everything is just so close to the forefront of your emotions. The match I played with Borg in 80 was often talked about as one of the greatest, if not the best match that people had seen. And was there ever such tension in the men's final? A tie break in the fourth set. I think we brought out the best from each other. We gave always 100%. I had this tailor made like superstar. I like to think I made him a better player, but he certainly made me a better player. Ah! I knew that I had to bring out my A game every time I stepped out on the court with Martina. Yes. When I played Chris, you know, it's this mind games you play against each other when you know each other that well. Especially when you do have contrasting styles. And Nadal and Federer embody that. The key to a great rivalry is contrast, and you couldn't have more polar opposites. Roger, when he's walking on the center court of Wimbledon, looks so relaxed, just embraces the environment, and does it in a way that doesn't use extra energy. Rafa is someone with high energy, high intensity, 
Look, we've seen what he does with the bottles on the court. He likes things in certain order, wants a lot of stuff done certain ways. I remember seeing Nadal in his sleeveless shirt, bulging biceps. And then right next to him, you'd got what looked like a prince, not a hair out of place. I like that lefty-righty, the way they dress, the way they act, their temperaments, their personalities. Rafa, you know, he's the swashbuckler. You know, he's more emotional, and he wears his emotions more in sleeves. You can sort of see what he's feeling more. And Rogers, you know, sort of the ever-classy, you know, almost perfect guy like Borg was. So Federer, 26-year-old maestro from Switzerland. Number one in the world since February 2004. He's going for title number six. It was something not even the great Swede Bjorn Borg could achieve. It's hard enough to feel the pressure of having to win a tournament. But when you're going for six in a row, I did the six in a row, you know you'll never ever have the chance again, never. So the pressure is exponentially greater. Everybody talked about this match and I was the umpire, the spectator of this beauty. Here comes Roger. The tennis I was able to watch, the players we had, the tournament it was. I believe as well, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to feel like a big head, but I believe that the officiating was great as well. Just fantastic, isn't it? Straight out of the blocks. Both players look like they're timing the ball well, constructing the rallies well. Oh. In tennis, you have to put your opponent away. We have to always win the last point to get over the finish line. Cada punto que juego y cada pelota que pego la pego con una intención. Molestar al rival. Buscar la manera en que la bola puede dañar al contrario, ¿no? Y darme a mí la oportunidad de ganar el punto, ¿no? I do believe that as a tennis player, it's constant problem solving and trying for solutions and trying out things. On the surface, if you're just watching as a spectator, it might just look, oh, this guy's playing so good. But all the little decisions we have to take in every point, in every game, in every match, in every tournament, there are so many of them. The biggest difference between any other sport and tennis is that you have nobody else to talk to. You have a coach, but you can't talk to them. You have to problem solve by yourself. Most fundamentally, Federer is a sporting aristocrat. He embodies virtues such as effortlessness, pure skill, talent, artistry, And these are reflected both in his person and the way he carries himself, and, more fundamentally, the way he plays tennis. Nadal stands for effort and its associated qualities. Endurance, muscle power, fortitude, stamina. <laughs> 